I would like to do a short review of a product I recently purchased from Salig. The uh, product is the Triarchy Near Field Probe Set. In the box there are three of the probes. The uh, fourth one is connected to a, a, a coaxial cable over here. And they, the probes come with two H-field probes. Those are the ones with the blue loops. And, uh, and two E-field probes, one of which is the one that's connected there and the other one is still in the box. Over here is the listing that uh, uh, currently appears on the Salig website. You may notice that the uh, price is uh, $97. And they're, these are sometimes even on sale for less than that. But I consider them to be a, a very good value. Here is a set from uh, Beehive Electronics which uh, costs about $295. Here is a, another set uh, that T-Equipment sells. I think these are made by uh, TechBox, and I believe that, that uh, Dave Jones on the EEV blog reviewed these. The price on them, if I remember right, is about $390. I haven't used these others. I have watched a couple of uh, videos, one by Dave Jones, another by uh, Alan W2AEW on new field probes. I'm going to try to show these probes in use both with spectrum analyzers and with uh, oscilloscopes. The first thing I'm going to do is to use this uh, Instec uh, GSP730 spectrum analyzer. It goes up to about 3 gigahertz. And by the way, I'll show you the specs on these Triarchy probes in a little bit. I've connected up this uh, Siglent board to a USB uh, connection, actually just to a USB power supply. But before I show you the use of this near-field probe, this is the other E-field probe. And you may notice that the uh, SMA connector in order to connect that to a, a normal SMA cable, you do need some of these little adapters which don't come with the set. I buy them in little groups of four uh, from uh, Amazon, actually. What I'm going to be doing is showing you some signals from here, and I'll also show you on the oscilloscope first what this signal and this signal look like. Here is the 10 megahertz signal. As you see, it's just a straight square wave, and this is using the, the regular Rigol probes. Let me now move the, uh, the probe over to the 25 megahertz signal. And there you see the 25 megahertz is a sine wave. I've set up the instec to uh, begin at uh, 5 megahertz on the left and go to uh, 30 megahertz on the right. So first let's look at the 10 megahertz signal. Once again this is with the E-field probe. And you notice that we get a spike at 10 megahertz. Now let's look at the 25 megahertz. Now what I'm going to do is change to an H-field probe. And the reason for that is to illustrate that an H-field probe is really intended to measure current. So unless there's a significant amount of current flowing through uh, a wire, H-field probes, because they're shielded against electric fields, won't show the electric field. Let me set that up. I've now connected this H-field probe. Uh, H just stands for flux in uh, normally measured in Orsteds to the spectrum analyzer. Now I'm going to put it in the same proximity to the 10 megahertz signal and you notice that we get virtually no 
no response. What I'm doing, I, I'm putting my fingers on the probe because that actually sometimes uh, increases the sensitivity, increases the antenna area. And there you see we are able in a certain position to get that 10 megahertz. Now let's go over and try to do the same thing with the 25 megahertz. There's the 25 megahertz. Now I'm going to put my finger on top and notice how it uh, goes up. Let me show you what I was doing there on the board. What I was doing was sensing the 10 megahertz this way and if you uh, noticed the amplitude was quite a bit lower this way. I was also trying various other positions like this and turning it uh, perpendicular and so on, none of which really increased the signal. But when I put my finger on the uh, probe, in essence what I'm doing is I'm using the capacitance between my finger and the signal to increase the uh, level Basically, what it is re now reading is the, uh, the, the charge that is transferring between that conductor and my finger as the, uh, the other plate of a capacitor. Now I have the near field probe, the E-probe, connected to this Rigol uh, DSA 815 with approximately the same settings. In other words, a 5 megahertz uh, start frequency and a 30 megahertz stop frequency. So now let's take a look at the signal, the 10 megahertz signal with the E-field probe. There you see uh, a small but nonetheless clearly distinguishable 10 megahertz. And now over here is the 25 megahertz and you'll notice that the uh, the amplitude is uh, a little lower for that one, which it is in practice. Once again, near-field probes, because they're subject to the amount of coupling, are not a good way to measure the amplitude of a signal. You can only get relative measurements in general. So now let me hook up the H-field uh, probe and do the same thing. Now I've hooked up the same H-field probe, so let me come down and uh, try that on the 10 and 25 megahertz. First on the 10 megahertz there and you see I, I'm not getting anything. Now I'm going to put my finger on top and you see you get a little bit. Now over to the 25 megahertz and you see very little. Now, now I'm going to put my finger on top and you see we get uh, quite a bit more. These probes seem to work quite well with the Rigol as well as the Instec. They would work better if I had an amplifier and I uh, perhaps in a, in a later video or maybe in addition to this one I can hook up a, a mini circuits wideband amplifier but uh, before I consider doing that I think I'd like to show you the specs on these relatively inexpensive near-field probes. Once again, these, uh, this is the Triarchy TNP6GX and as I always try to do whenever I review something I point out that I have no connection with Triarchy. In fact, I didn't even know about them until I saw something on the Salig website about them. I have since bought these near-field probes and also the Triarchy vector signal generator that I uh, have reviewed in, in some other videos and I was getting about this response. Now I will show you that large H-field probe here that is that, uh, that rather large uh, blue H-field probe and you'll notice that it does have a resonance at this point and they point that out. Uh, which causes the characteristic to be a little bit uh, increased at that point and then it falls off again. They show this as falling off dramatically at 5 gigahertz as I pointed out. I was only able to test up to about 3 gigahertz which is right in here and uh, was able to find uh, usable response out to 3 gigahertz. 
Here are the specs on the Triarchy. And you'll notice that the frequency range for the uh, H-fields go down to, uh, I think it's uh, 10 megahertz and up to about 6 gigahertz. The E-field probes start at a gigahertz and go up to 12 gigahertz. The reason that's of some interest is, you may have noticed that earlier I was using E-field probes as well as H-field to sense 10 and 25 megahertz signals. So what I've done now is I have connected up a mini circuits low noise amplifier. Let me show you the specs on that and then we'll take a look at what that does for our signal strength on the uh, spectrum analyzer. Here is the low noise amplifier made by many circuits. You notice that it has a frequency range of 100 kilohertz to 1000 megahertz or a gigahertz in other words. It takes a 15 volt signal, uh, su supply I mean, and provides significant gain. I'll show you the gain curve in a minute, but before we look at the gain curve, let's take a look at the spectrum analyzer. Here is the spectrum analyzer, the uh, Rigol DSA815 again, and with the output of the low noise amplifier connected to its input. And I've changed the span a little bit. Instead of ending at 30 megahertz, I've uh, moved it out to 35, so it goes from 5 megahertz to 35 megahertz. And the reason I did that is to show you this. Here is an E-field probe, and you'll notice that not only does it have a nice signal at 5 megahertz, remember this is a square wave, so odd harmonics should be rich. And in fact, the, the third harmonic does show up. The second harmonic is right there, and you see it's almost down in the noise. But the third harmonic does show up pretty well. And you may have noticed that the amplitude is quite a bit better with the uh, low noise amplifier. The specific low noise amplifier that I'm using is a mini circuits ZFL 1000 LN plus. As I showed you earlier it has a uh, frequency response out to, or at least it's specified, out to 1 gigahertz. So let's take a look at the mini circuits data sheet on that. I'm operating the amplifier at uh, 15 volts, or actually at 14 and a half volts. As you can see from the specs, the gain is somewhere between 23 and 25 uh, dB over that frequency range. Let me show you that on a chart right there. 1000 megahertz on the right, uh, 100 kilohertz on the left, and the, we're operating it along this line, the top line that is, at around 14 and a half volts. So uh, as you see it's relatively flat and that's one reason I got this amplifier for two reasons. One, it's relative flatness, and second is it's uh, low noise. And I once again offer that I don't have any connection with many circuits uh, either. In fact, I don't have any connection with, with any commercial enterprises. Uh, so I hope this has been uh, useful information about the uh, mini circuits amplifier, the Triarchy near field probes, how they can be used in various ways. And uh, speaking about the probes, I have to say for the for the $97 price, and sometimes as I pointed out, they're even a little lower than that. You might watch the Sailly website. Uh, they, they are a great value. I know I'm going to find a lot of applications for them. So in the meantime, look forward to maybe doing some more videos along these lines. But in the meantime, have a nice day.